The Great Sky Island is to Tears of the Kingdom what the Great Plateau was to Breath of the Wild. It's basically an extended tutorial section where you get most of the skills and abilities you will use for the rest of the game. For the many years we've played Breath of the Wild, skipping the Great Plateau was always an elusive goal. Unfortunately, the game strictly refuses to let you leave by causing you to void out if it detects you outside the Great Plateau before you complete it. So, the Great Plateau remains unskippable. Shortly after starting Tears of the Kingdom and wandering around the Great Sky Island, my first thought was, I wonder if this is skippable. Given that the Great Plateau was impossible to skip, my hopes were not high, but I still wanted to try. A lot of the longer videos on my channel were the result of me trying to skip GSI. Mostly learning more about the glitches I thought would be helpful and realizing that knowledge could be useful in other ideas. So this is that story to the best of my knowledge. I've been working on and off on this same task for a few months in between videos, as well as I've attempted so many things it would take hours to really explain everything I've tried. First though, it's really important to me that you listen and fully understand this part of the video. Without the awesome people in the speedrunning discord and even the Hyrule Engineers discord, I could 100% say I would have never gotten as far as I have. I don't just open Tears of the Kingdom and figure all this stuff out alone. So many people have put in a lot of time and effort finding glitches and the majority of the time I'm just a sponge. I use these glitches like puzzle pieces to achieve a goal, but without the community I would have no pieces to puzzle. So if you're interested, please join. There is one person I would like to acknowledge that's had a huge impact on this goal. Their name is Aragol. A lot of his efforts have truly made this goal seem within our reach and has influenced me to continue trying to make it happen. The issue with attempting to skip GSI is much like Breath of the Wild. The game checks Link's coordinates every frame. If they are outside the box they want Link to stay in, he is voided out and returned to the last usable coordinates. This is a pretty foolproof way to stop anyone from leaving GSI before it's completed. Because if you did somehow get Link out of the box, the first frame the game realizes it, it corrects it. In this video I'll be hopping around between files that have already finished the Great Sky Islands and files that have not finished GSI. I'll be putting these markers in the top right corner whenever that information is relevant. The beginning of GSI Skip was probably a pipe dream in many people's mind, but I would say it mostly started to get some real effort behind it in July of 2023. This was due to the fact that when doing stuff out of bounds in the prologue, you can trigger a dialogue state while falling. Typically, you'd get voided out and return to the beginning, but falling through the void while in the dialogue lets you continue to fall all the way to the bottom. This is when I saw a message from Aragol posing the first question. If you can ignore the void out while in dialogue, then can we text dive on GSI to achieve the same thing? Both Aragol and I made some efforts to even get one text dive on GSI, but in the first few attempts, nothing came of it. And to be honest, I moved on to other things. Not that I didn't think it was possible, but I started to feel like it was unlikely. Later that day, Ergo found out that these logs have a special property that allowed them to move during a dialogue, and that rolling these logs into Link while in dialogue can push him off the ledge. While this got you off of GSI, as soon as you finish the dialogue, the game figures out you've left and sends you right back. But the information this provided is extremely good. We know that text diving is possible on GSI, and Link can exist outside of GSI while in a dialogue. Armed with this knowledge, Aquacluck used some cheats to edit Link's coordinates and warp him to the army platform while in a text dive. The thought was if we can somehow get Link to army while in dialogue, could we even trigger the fight? And if we could trigger the fight, would it void us out if we ended the dialogue? Aquacluck was able to trigger the fight and not get voided out. This was huge information. Now we know that if we make it to the army platform without voiding out, the trigger will take priority over the void out, and then after making it to army, we can beat the game. Clouded had shared a video where it was determined that you didn't need to be standing on the platform to trigger army. You could be standing or climbing anywhere in the army trigger to start the fight. This led us to attempting to trigger the army fight from out of bounds, which was found to be possible. So now we know that we don't have to be standing on the platform to trigger the fight, and we don't even need to be in bounds to trigger the fight. The next large discovery was the effect fuse entanglement has on an object while in dialogue. Let's take a few moments to explain a few of the major glitches I use in this video. 
Fuse entanglement is when you attempt to fuse an object to a shield, but change shields before the fuse is complete. This binds the state of the object to the shield, while still allowing it to be controlled as if it were a normal object in the game world. Key thing to note is that if you put the shield away or get too far from the shield, the object it's entangled with will also get removed from the world. Fuse entanglement opens the door to many other glitches. You can zuggle this shield by putting your back against a wall, and dropping the shield, switching shields, and dropping the new shield extremely quickly. This puts the shield in a limbo that's neither equipped or in our inventory. This allows us to smuggle this object into the past through saves or into a brand new game. This is called Zuggle Load Object Transfer, or ZLOT. Zlotting an object allows for a new glitch called a recall lock. Recalling the zlotted object and then loading a save mid-recall causes the object to be locked in place. This causes the object to be frozen in time until we use recall again, or put the shield in our inventory to delete it. These are the glitches that allow me to safely take multiple objects into a new game. Puke mentioned in the Discord that if you send through an object that was fuse entangled, the object would continue to fall, which led Ergold to test more on its use in text diving. At first, it didn't seem likely, as when he fuse entangled a Zonai wing and attempted to send through it while it was in the air, nothing would happen. We eventually discovered that non Zonai objects would work, but Zonai devices would remain frozen during dialogue, so we have new information to add. Fuse entanglement can create situations that make text diving easier and that this also opens up the possibility of using many different dialogues. At this point in the process, I would say I was still a little new to most of the glitches. While trying to beat Mulgara with the boat, I got a little sidetracked on the Ultra Broken glitch. Some of you may remember it as Wacko Boingo, but you may not understand why the name was changed. At first, Wacko Boingo was just some silly, maybe not too useful way to get across the map super fast. After some deeper investigation though, it became obvious that it was much, much more than that. Ultra Broken Flight is just one of the many things that can be achieved, but there are so many branches of glitches that spawn off this one cutscene that it has a document of its own, which is why it was renamed to Ultra Broken. Anyways, I got extremely deep into Ultra Broken. This is when I started messing with Ghost Glue. Ghost Glue is what happens when you attempt to glue an Ultra Broken object to any other object. It's constantly trying to get close enough to glue, but never actually does. While Ghost Glue was a known glitch, its limitations and uses were not yet known. What interested me about it was its ability to be separated, and regardless of how far the objects were apart, you could get them to come back together. Which got me thinking, can I create a platform that moves Link between two points? After a lot of research, I was able to transport Link, but also do it while in a dialogue state. The primary issue was applying this glitch to the GSI skip, as it takes beating GSI to get to this point. Fortunately, slotting each object we use in the build allows us to transfer it to a new save, regardless of what state it's in. This is when GSI skip became my primary goal. We know that text boxes will allow us to ignore the void out. So this will be the state we are in while we are trying to make our way to the army platform. This state is extremely limiting to say the least, meaning that once we start the dialogue, everything that happens has to happen almost completely without our input. Given that I can create a platform that can take me off a of GSI to just about anywhere on the surface, I first try an idea that I had. If army can be triggered via League's presence at the end of a dialogue, is there anything else that can be triggered? Well, yeah, but not a lot. Both of the starting quests for Riju and Tulin are triggered by Link's presence. Unfortunately, you have to make it there twice. This is due to the fact that the Blunt Boot spawns if you get too close to one of the four areas too soon. Afterwards, though, you can trigger the cutscene. It still voids you out afterwards, though. Earlier, when it was found out that you can trigger army and not get voided out afterwards, I assumed it had something to do with the new boundary box around army and began to look to see if there was another one somewhat like it. And yeah, mini games, house building, and the battle at Kar Kar Bazaar, among many others. But unfortunately, there's no way to trigger any of those events with Link's presence alone. My thought was, even if we get stuck there, maybe we can use it like a stepping stone, but unfortunately, that was a dead end. While doing some work with the Ghost Glue platform, there were a few issues along the way, mostly getting the platform to start moving at an easily manageable time, given that I was currently using Ultra Hand or Recall to break the lock holding the platform in place. 
Aragil suggested that I could put away the shield that the recall locked object was entangled with to maybe start the movement, which worked. But this limits me to dialogue boxes that gives me items. So that I have limited access to my shields and weapons. Which in theory gives me two stops for the platform to move. So couldn't I just make a platform to head under the castle and get to army? Unfortunately, the platform works best when it has light of sight. Meaning nothing is in the way as the platform can easily get hung up on objects. To make it through all this in two or three lines is impossible. Maybe. While my hopes were high, the game had other plans. Given that it was pretty easy to move Link from one point to the other, my main issue was finding a path to army that wasn't extremely complicated. We have a lot of options for clipping, and if I could just clip underneath the depths, I would have a pretty unobstructed view of the army area. Clipping is the act of moving the normal collision Link has with walls, floors, and ceilings. We have many options for clipping, but only two provide us with a clip that's somewhat sustainable. Things like Hydro Clip are too temporary, and Infinite Height Clipping requires inputs that we can't perform while in a dialogue. So our options are Zuggle Overload Clipping or SDC Clipping. Both require a steering stick. Overload clipping is zuggling so much that the game starts to lose track of things and getting on a steering stick in this state will cause a clip. SDC is when you fuse and tangle the steering stick, then drop the shield and attempt to ride the stick shortly afterwards. The downside to clipping using a steering stick is that it takes away some of the dialogues we can use. Most dialogues use an A press to get started, but since we are on a steering stick, that option is unavailable meaning we will need to use a dialogue that starts by completing a Korok puzzle or bothering a construct. So I test every possible dialogue with both versions of the stick clip. Both the Korok dialogue and the construct dialogue would just freeze you mid-clip when the dialogue started, only to resume the clip after the dialogue is finished. I begin to make the assumption that since the stick is a Zonai device, and Zonai devices can't move during dialogue, that must be the reason Link is getting frozen. Lido shared a video where he used SDC to clip into a cutscene trigger, and it continued to cause him to clip beneath the room. This was good and bad news. The good news is we know it's not impossible to clip during a dialogue. The bad news is there are no dialogues on GSI that start via Link's presence. Given that I had already tested the dialogues on GSI, I assumed that the clip needed to also trigger the dialogue in order for it to work. At this point, I started to get a little desperate. I tested if the steering stick was ultra broken, if it was recall locked. Someone posted a video of a gas fan blowing them and their horse into the depths. And that made them clip. But we can't get a horse on GSI, so I tried to replicate the same thing with a steering stick, and it didn't work. There's one cutscene which was interesting. If you hit this fan, it will trigger the construct to give you the battery. Getting this battery will cause you to fall slowly. So I'd fuse and tangle the stick and force the shield to drop in the void while in dialogue. It took over 30 minutes to fall all the way down from GSI, but I still landed on the ground. There is a large void out space in the back of Hyrule. I began to wonder if there are any holes in the geometry that would take me to the depths, but it was practically impossible to search thoroughly. I definitely tried text diving and looking. Unfortunately, it always leads to a soft lock of Link voiding out over and over. So my pace is slowing down, but I get tagged in a thread about the success of stealing the infinite minigame wing. Mulberry had used some of the information in my ghost glue video to steal the wing for the first time, so I had to see how he did it. Upon watching the video, two things strike me as odd. The wing just moved a decent distance while in a dialogue state, and Mulberry had fell down the chasm while in the dialogue state. Normally, Zonai devices can't move during a dialogue. I say they can't move, but they can move very slightly, so I attribute the movement to that. And the text dive was probably just a coincidence. But then he steals it again, and Janeway for President posts a video of them stealing it as well. There is no reason why this wing should move this freely in dialogue. So I join in to help out and figure out what's going on. I completely ignore the obvious answer. 
It must be recall. It must be the weight. I keep testing because it would be pretty useful to learn how Zonai devices can move during dialogue. Only to realize that it moves during dialogue just because it does. This wing has a different name than the other wings in the game. That's part of the reason why it lasts forever. This object needs to be named something else so it can contain a different tag that allows it to be infinite. Knowing this, Echo found a tag that was in the list for the normal wing, but not for this infinite wing. Event Physics Pause. Maybe this was the tag responsible for forcing the normal Zonai devices to be frozen during dialogue. She gets a list of objects that has this tag that prevents movement. But I ask, can I get a list of objects that don't have this tag? I mean, what if there's another Zonai device that can move during dialogue? I check the list and... There's a steering stick on here. This stick is labeled O3 versus O1, so I just call it the O3 stick. There are only three in the game, and they are attached to these Yiga builds in the depths. Unfortunately, you can't just pull them off, but with a well-placed recall-locked hoverstone, it's free. My assumption was that since the steering stick is a Zonai device, it would stop the clip and freeze Link. But if this stick can move during dialogue, then I might be able to clip down. I grab the stick and start to test. To avoid needing to go all the way to GSI, I just use this dialogue in the Terrytown race that can be started by shooting the build on the platform. I get both the normal stick and the O3 stick. I'm testing the normal stick as a control to make sure that it reacts the same way it does to this dialogue as it does to the ones on GSI. First I try to make it just move during dialogue, and it does. I attempt to ride the normal stick while in dialogue, and I freeze, which is to be expected. I ride the O3 stick and... Wow, this is crazy. Now for the moment of truth. I attempt to clip on the O3 stick, This is it. I've done it. I'm gonna skip GSI. With all the factors combined, I know that if I use the dialog that gives me access to my inventory, I can make a platform underneath Link that I can then break and send to the army platform. I don't know where to go to trigger the fight, but I'm 100% sure I can figure that part out. You might think that this clip would cause me to just fall through my platform, but once I reach the boundary for the depths, the stick will get deleted, and that will remove my ability to clip. I'll worry about whatever else I need to do when I get that far. So now, I just want to get to the depths by clipping through GSI and the surface. I picked this Korok because it's over water. The depths map is a reverse of the surface map, and all the points of water just happen to be out of bounds already. This allows me to drop beneath the depths and gives me a pretty direct shot at army. So, let's give it a shot. Hmm. You know, maybe it has something to do with it being a Korok. The Korok dialogue isn't like the one I used in Terrytown. It moves the camera away from Link, and that probably has something to do with it. But that's cool. I could still use one of the constructs. So, let's just give that a shot. Hmm. Hmm. So what's weird here is that for the Korok, if I just ride the steering stick, it moves during dialogue just fine. But for the constructs, it doesn't. Even though if I'm not riding it, it'll move during their dialogue just fine. I redo the hours of testing with this new steering stick, which includes sending it to a new game just to try this one dialogue. Because unfortunately, once you get the battery, you can't do that dialogue again. Though, I can save just before I do it and try it over and over. But yeah, I get nowhere. I do see that this stick acts in some different ways, but nothing that lets me clip. At this point, I'm definitely defeated. I would estimate that most of what I've shown here is about 25% of my testing. I really felt like I was so close to clipping and all I needed to do was find the right dialogue but none of them worked. This is when someone mentioned that the Korok above the Room of Awakening was obtainable prior to the title cutscene. As soon as I heard that, I knew I could skip the title cutscene, but it was bittersweet. 
Skipping the title cutscene was just me trying to cope with the fact that I wasn't feeling good about GSI Skip, which is where some of these clips come from. Normally, if you can get on a steering stick and fly into the title cutscene, the stick freezes in place, and that causes Link to be stuck in place as well. But with the O3 stick, it doesn't get frozen, and Link will stay with it. It's cool, but it's pretty much me losing it after being so sure that I had it. I make my Halloween video and the title skip video. I start planning some other videos and ideas and just sort of put GSI on the back burner. The new free cam mod was available so I combined the want to make a video with that and the want to remake my old cost skip skip video. Currently free cam only works on 1.1 and up so I update to 1.1.1 and get some cool camera shots. Making the cog skip skip video took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but now that I have the free cam I kind of want to check some things out that I couldn't before. First I want to see what happens during the Korok dialogue, and it turns out that Link is cold during the dialogue. Which is pretty interesting, it means that when using the Korok Seed dialogue to text dive, Link is actually just invisible, and we're moving an invisible Link. But it's no use to us. The next thing I want to check out is the void behind Hyrule, just to see if there are any holes that I could use to fall out of bounds. And there isn't a single spot. I decide to do another test with the steering stick to see if I fall from up high and hit the dialogue, would that do anything? I missed my shot. To be honest, I know it's not going to work, so I don't even try again. One thing I've been wanting to work on is this text slide. It looks pretty cool, and if I can somehow make it faster, then maybe it'll get used in speedruns. So I was going to start a new game to make it to that point. I figured I might as well bring a stick with me to give that a shot. I arrived and I tried it again. My shot hit this time, but again I'm frozen in place. I don't know what I thought would change, but it's been so long since I've tried I barely remember what I have and haven't tried. This is the point I've been at so many times with this text box. Once I get the battery I'll start slowly falling down and I'll just be stuck out of bounds in the GSI floor. I get the battery text box and I start falling. Did I just clip? No, I couldn't have. I must have already been out of the bottom before the dialogue started. But just to be sure, I'll, I'll wait till I land on the surface and see what happens. It takes about 30 minutes to hit the surface, so I wait, and I wait. What? This is extremely good news, but I don't know why it happened. I put in a lot of effort and this is no different than the other attempts. Well, let me try the same thing with a normal steering stick. It works the same way. So what's different now? Maybe using the free cam is breaking the game in a way that allows it to work. Wait a minute, I'm on 1.1.1. And I've done all my testing on 1.0. I had had some fears that updating might give different results, but I was so burnt out at the time I didn't feel like updating. And even attempting it, I was pretty sure it wasn't going to work. I've been using an autosave, so let me make a hard save and then load 1.0 and try again. So yeah, it appears that 1.0 is the only thing that's not allowing it to work. Okay then, 1.1.1 is fine to be honest, so we could just go back to that. But before I get too deep into building the platform, I want to just text dive through the water and get below the depths. Wait, what? I'm on 1.1.1. Now it's acting like 1.0. I feel GSI skip slipping away from me again. What did I do differently? Maybe I did something on this save and that's what locked me out of it? Let me start again from a new file. And it works. So let's start from scratch on 1.0, and it works here too. 
Normally I would want to figure out why, but this is very very strange behavior. When an issue persists through a hard reboot of the game, it gets a little difficult to truly tell what's going on. And to be honest, I know how to clip now and I don't really care about the why right now. But my two ideas are that it has something to do with maybe the fact that I failed hitting the fan on the first attempt and the act of SDC permanently scars the file in no noticeable way other than this one instance. Or it has something to do with the difference between an autosave and a hard save that's messing with it. But this would explain why I didn't find it before. This isn't the easiest dialogue to test and I have no idea the state of the file during all my attempts. So Future Timber here. I had to re-record some footage because I couldn't find the original, which means I needed to figure out why it happened to record it. And it's the hard save. Any autosave before or after the hard save on GSI will work fine, but if you load a hard save and attempt it, you will always get snapped back to the stick. Throughout all my attempts, I tried on both 1.0 and 1.1.1. I ultimately stuck with 1.1.1 due to the fact that it allowed me to have a few more shields zuggled before I started to overload the game. I tend to be around 10 to 12 shields deep with my builds, so having the extra headroom in 1.1.1 makes up for some of the glitches it doesn't have. Now for the drop below the depths. And yeah, I can get down there. This is really it. The only issue is this clip takes forever. It takes 30 minutes to get through the first surface clip and another 15 to get below the depths. I did a test just to see and it takes an hour and 40 minutes to get from GSI all the way to the floor out of bounds below the depths. 45 minutes is nothing though if it means I can skip GSI. So this is the fun part. Or at least it was supposed to be. I can't catch a break. Up until this point I never really looked for the army trigger that was out of bounds, but before I make my first attempt, I needed to find out where that is. This is the army platform at the end of the game. It's all contained in this room, with no real way to get in from the outside. After defeating army, you can get back here to go to the Ganondorf fight. And the army trigger is right here. There is also a void out layer right here. The Void Out will destroy any object and Void Link out if he touches it. And the part of the army trigger that's out of bounds is... Right here. This means I have to transport Link around the back side of army to get into the trigger. I also have to dodge the Void Out zone because even though while Link is in dialogue he can survive through the Void, objects cannot. So I run the risk of losing my platform if I'm not careful. Honestly, I just want to make an attempt. Having Link anywhere near army is a huge success, so I'm just going to yellow it. I place the steering stick here so that I am over water. I get the coordinate of my stick and place my build underneath it. Since the shrines and overworld share the same world box, I go into a shrine and get the build to fall just below the depths. And now I just gotta get out of bounds. There's my build. I set it up in the correct spot and then ghost glue my hover stone and take it to the location. If you remember Ultra Broken Flight, I typically add a spare board to my build so that I can just fly my hover stone to the location. But here is the fun part. I have to squeeze into this spot without going too far down to void out and destroy my hover stone. I can't be too high or my camera starts to get hung up, but I have to get close enough to the trigger to put my stone in it, but not too close as to accidentally trigger the fight. Once the stone's in position, I'll recall lock it and head to a new game. To be honest, I 100% know this isn't going to work, but again, I just want to see the platform. I think this is where I should mention this. Now that I have a functional way of getting to army and at this point it's just trial and error, I start putting on some self-imposed limitations. The first one is that I want to start from a new game. I want this file to be start to finish and not return to the other save I used to set up. Second, this would be much easier if I grabbed one of the abilities. I mean, if I make it, I still have to fight Army and Ganondorf, so Fuse would be great, but I'm not going to. 
I see a path to the end of the game without any abilities and any shrines. Once I start the new game, I need a bow and an unfused copy of the weapon that I used to smuggle the steering stick onto the save, because it won't let me pick up the steering stick stick without it. I get into position. I mean, I know where to shoot, but I'm still nervous. I only get one shot. If I hit the fan and miss the clip by not pressing A fast enough, then I get the battery and this attempt is over. If I get the clip and miss the fan, I'll void out. And after doing an SDC, you can't use the stick to SDC again. So the attempt would be over. It's not hard to do, but it's extremely stressful after all that setup. I take the shot, wait a moment, SDC, got it. Now, after that tense moment, we wait. 45 minutes. While we wait, I'd like to tell you about this patch I made. I don't run ads on my channel, but that doesn't mean I don't like money. I figured merch is the best way to financially support this channel, but I wanted to provide something more than just a logo on a t-shirt, even though I'll probably do that too at some point. This is part of a larger idea I have following the Space Cat theme of the channel. You can become part of the crew, and soon I'll be releasing monthly pins based on the videos on this channel, like the Decayed Master Sword or the Infinity Wing. For channel members, I'll also have limited special edition versions of each pin available to purchase or for free depending on your level. This patch is the start of funding that project, so I would appreciate your support. I only have 100 patches currently, but in the unlikely event I sell out, I'll order more. If you're unable to support financially, your subscription to my channel is enough, and I appreciate that. Now for the second tense moment, the clip through the surface. I don't know why, because I know it's going to work, but I still feel a huge sigh of relief once it happens. And then the third tense moment, which really isn't tense at all. The sound of recall breaking. This happens due to the fact that when we cross the threshold into the depths, the stick is deleted. But I've been put through so much pain after hearing recall break in my other builds that I can't help to have my heart sink every time it happens. When it happens in other situations, it always means something important just broke. So we make it to the platform. I'll have to put the shield away to delete my board. Here we go. It looks like I bounced off the side and Link was ejected from the build, but there it is, the army room. I can't really see the platform, but this is all I really wanted for this attempt. From this point on, I only make serious attempts. Most of the testing in this part of the video is hard to show in game because it's mostly looking at a text box and gathering the limited information of bumping into walls and Link's final landing spot. I often had to review the footage and find like one or two frames where I could see something and try to match it up the best I could in game. So I apologize, but I'm going to have to lean on explaining with graphics. I'm not sure if the build I'm trying is going to work, but given the time invested on each attempt, I didn't want to have a random success and not be prepared to finish the game. At the start of my attempts, it took me about an hour and 30 minutes to set up, plus about 45 minutes on GSI to grab the bow, arrow, bombs, rupee, I make a ton of speed food, stamina food, and I grab an already fused weapon. To be honest, I was just taking my time and grabbing whatever just in case. Then 45 minutes to drop from GSI. Now, how do I get to this point without too many collisions? First, I thought that if I built a better box, maybe I would bounce off a few times and it would still bring me around. I tried a few different options, but no real success. Link would either get ejected or the box would get hung up. During one of my tests, I was flying over to drop off my hover stone and I saw a tree just floating there. And if you're a regular viewer, then you know what this tree is. I thought, hmm. That's the tree that's in the void out zone in the army room. But if I can see that tree, then damn it. But wait a minute. Only the non ultra broken objects got got. The wood made it in just fine. So this gave me a thought. If ultra broken objects can survive the void out, then maybe I can go underneath. 
While making my Halloween video, I learned that the space underneath the army area doesn't void you out. So I go underneath and look up. This looks pretty promising. I test the ultra broken objects in the void, and yeah, if they are free called ultra broken, which makes them weightless, they don't get eaten by the void. But that means the best place to start my journey is at the very bottom of the world, the floor beneath the depths. Which means it'll add a whole hour to the drop. It's crazy, but it is what it is. The only problem is getting through the testing phase and the time it costs to learn. At this point, it takes me three hours to get set up, and that's if I don't mess something up. After a few attempts, I still feel like going under is a solution, but unfortunately I'm still hitting the outer wall of the area, meaning I'm getting pulled up too high before I reach the army area. I attempt to do the best idea I've ever had in my life. I need another stop. One that keeps me low, but also gets deleted when I arrive. It's an issue I've puzzled over for a long time, because multiple stops could make it a lot easier. Another glitch we should talk about is FE Chain, which is just fuse entanglement with extra steps. If I fuse entangle a shield with a shield, then I can drop my shield and pick up the other shield, and with some careful glitching I can fuse another shield to that one. I can repeat that with an object. Now I have one shield that I can slot, which will keep all these shields and the object loaded into the world. This makes it easier for me to acquire the shield that I need to put away that will remove the board that locks my build. Otherwise I would have to drop my zuggle, find the board shield, and then re-zuggle all the other shields. Using this, I can grab this shield and use it to delete another shield, which will then delete the object. But if I recall lock that shield over the void, and I glue this shield to it, once this shield is deleted, the other shield will fall until it voids out and deletes another object. Now I can hang this shield above the void out zone under the army platform, so that when I remove the shield to start my platform, it'll start a timer, and hopefully I'll arrive at my first stop before the shield hits the void out, removing the object and letting me continue. I'm not gonna lie. It's perfect, <sighs> is what I would say if it worked. After testing, it does work. It works really, really well. But the void out zone isn't loaded while I'm at the very bottom of the world, meaning the shield just falls straight to the ground. My next idea is weight. Ghost Glue's strength depends on multiple factors, mostly weight, distance, and game state. A dialogue state makes Ghost Glue much stronger, but that's just the condition we are working under and something we will not change. Distance is another factor that we aren't going to change, but it's helpful to point out that as you get further away from the destination, Ghost Glue gets weaker, and the closer you get, the stronger. This changes gradually, regardless of what state we are in. The last factor is weight. Ghost Glue's strength changes gradually based on the weight of the object it is trying to pull. Larger objects take more time than smaller ones. An object of zero mass will make a straight line to the destination, but an object of, say, 100k mass will mostly drag on the ground. At that point, friction is a huge factor. Fortunately, the floor underneath the depths has zero friction, so the object would still slide in its direction but would probably never get pulled off the ground. My goal is to find an object that's heavy enough to keep us grounded up until we get close that it starts to lift us off the ground. And since the object I'm using for weight won't be ultra broken, it'll get eaten by the void when I pass through, giving me more momentum to my destination. So I try the heaviest object I can find, and it's too heavy. I try something one third of that weight, and it's too light. So I try this, which is somewhere in the middle. When I make it to this point, I'm still experimenting with the box that carries me, and I think why not make the platform I land on bigger. So I make my box, add my weight, and try it out. I think I'm here. 
I can tell I'm 100% at my destination, but I'm slipping and I don't know why. Should I wait till I'm standing still? Because what if I'm accidentally airborne when I finish the dialogue? But what if I fall out and lose the chance at all? Am I mentally prepared to fight army? Whatever, let's go. This is bad news. My last concern is something I've been kind of ignoring. What if something about the coordinates edit into ARMY with the mod is something that allowed it to happen? It's definitely an outcome because we can never truly know if it works until we've done it in the game. But we can shove that bad thought where it came from, because there's one thing I've glossed over. I've been putting my hoverstone into the ARMY trigger, but I don't really know where it is. I like triggered the ARMY one time and said, oh, I suppose I'll just put it here, but I haven't really measured it out. So I do that and realize, yeah, I'm a good bit off. So another attempt. At this point, I've gotten my setup time down to 30 minutes and my time on GSI down to about 20 minutes. GSI time is down mainly because I stop worrying about being safe and I just get my rubies and go. but I still have to wait an hour and 45 minutes for the drop. I get there again. And nope. I think I know the issue this time though. My platform is leaving too much space for me to slide down and not be in the trigger. I need to go back to the smaller platform. All right, I'm here. This might be it. I'm not sure if I should wait until I'm not sliding, but whatever. I'm done with this. Let's go. Oh, I'm here. I could pretend that I had like a very excited reaction to being in here, but honestly, my nerves just froze me up. There's something that we haven't really talked about. What am I going to do now? To be honest, I didn't really think much further than getting rubies to fight the army because I have a good feeling I can figure the rest out on the fly. There's one issue though. The army fight is a one try thing. If I fail, I get sent all the way back to GSI. Normally the easiest way to deal with army is by chucking a bunch of rubies. But the drawback to this is the explosion is so large, if you're not careful you'll get caught up in one. And it's an instant death. I've done this fight a lot while I was speedrunning so it shouldn't be too hard. But I've never done this fight on world record pace and my heart is beating so fast I'd imagine this what world record pace feels like. There isn't much need to think about it, so let's just go. The Lizalfos are my worst phase, and if I'm a choke, this will be the moment. But I make it. The Gibdos are easy. And the Moblins are pretty easy too. All right, he's getting a little close. I choked. I choked on arguably the easiest of the four phases. Well, hopefully the first platform wasn't a fluke. I get there another time. And I get out of rhythm on the Bokoblins, and they're chasing me around, so <laughs> I just jump down where we normally go after army. I figure while I'm here, I might as well try to clip out of bounds. Normally you would need the ability will to do an infinite height clip. But I have zero abilities, so I have to try Zoaz, or Zuggle Overload Arrow Smuggle. I haven't messed with this version of Arrow Smuggle, though I've messed with the quick Arrow Smuggle in 1.2 enough to understand how to use it. Zuggle Overload Arrow Smuggle, or Zoaz, is when you overload so much that you have your weapons or your shields start falling on the ground. If you do this and change to a bow and the bow falls on the ground, you get into a position in which you can't shoot any arrows. This creates a pretty unique situation where if you're in the air and you try to jump attack, it'll cancel the jump attack on the first frame, but still give you the upwards momentum. Doing this while in bullet time is practically just like infinite height clipping, and it'll eventually allow us to clip into the ceiling without the ability will. The zuggling part is a bit difficult though. 
On 1.0, drop zuggle is fairly easy, but on 1.1.1 you need a wall and some weapons to make this work. Given that I don't know a solid setup, I just have to try finding it by dropping weapons and seeing which one doesn't come out. But I have one really good advantage here. I have about 10 shields on my back from the platform, so I don't need to zuggle too much. Once I get arrow smuggle, I slip in. I mainly decided to kill this attempt just to try to make sure that I have what I need to get to Ganondorf and skip the boss rush. I just need to clip one more time to get into the hallway and oh, there's my platform. So I get the clip and thankfully I'm here. Unfortunately, Ganondorf only spawns after I beat army, so we'll need to come back and Oh my god, Zuggle doesn't work on Ganondorf from 1.1.1. Well, I'm glad I remembered that. So I make a small modification to my setup to include the message not found sword with something already fused to it. It's been 8 days of attempts, and this one is gonna be my last. This time I clean up the army fight and I make my way to Ganondorf. Now one of two things can happen. The game normally has an autosave right before the fight, so that if you die you immediately get to try again, but I'm nervous that it may be janky and not put me back here because I've skipped DSI and all. Or the autosave will work fine and I can take all the time I need. Or the unforeseen third option, which is I beat him first try and not even have to worry about it. Now to the dragon fight. As epic as this fight is, it's pretty much an auto scroller and next to impossible to die on. Or you can get hit by your wing and die. Fortunately, you start over at the start of the dragon fight, so fight the dragon. Head to Zelda. And that's it. The Legend of Zelda. No tears, no kingdom. So my reward for skipping GSI is a little star on my save prior to leaving GSI. Also I get to see the percentage of the game I've completed, which is 0.2%. And you know what? I know for a fact that I can beat this game with 0%. The five things I need to avoid are the GSI location and the four cave entrances I used. While this whole setup may not be any percent speedrun viable, it could be lowest percent viable. Though I'll need to make a formal run and the rules for lowest percent include more than just the things that show up as percentages. But it only considers the stuff that you've acquired in the file you use to complete the game. In about a week or so, I'm going to release a much shorter video on how I got 0% and take you through some of the step by step of how I achieved all this. After that, I'm going to stream a lowest percent record attempt. I will have to start on a completely new file, so I predict the run will take about 4 hours. Subscribe so you don't miss it. If you made it this far, thanks.
I know this video was pretty long, but it was difficult to figure out which parts of the struggle I wanted to leave out. I want to thank my channel members, Taco Sensei, Phi Math Music, Suishi, Planethak, Trevor, Jane Keto, Weirda, and Why You Have to Be Mad. Anyways, thanks for watching.